Low Impact Consensual Cuddling. Stellar Cuddle Slut Supreme. Electric Boogaloo featuring Airbud on lead guitar. Ultimately, it was still a mystery of exactly how you ended up in talking small horsey land in the first place. After all, one moment you were perfectly occupied with your own nefarious happenings, and suddenly just nothing. And then just as suddenly, something again, though this time with more white eyes and multiple exotic colors of fur. Though really that last part didn't matter. You weren't racist, after all. You had ended up sat for hours on end in a special foreign dignitary's room gifted to you by Princess Sunhorse Celestia and Princess Moonbutt Luna in a generic thinker's pose. And you attempted to piece together for yourself exactly how this could have happened and how you could have possibly reversed the chain of events to return you home. On one hand, you were simply multitasking, watching the football game that Sunday as well as keeping a keen eye on the robust anime boobies on your computer screen. And on the other hand was Lotion. Allegedly, some combination of those key ingredients on top of some magical malarkey sent you careening through a rather colorful wormhole of justice and deposited you here in Equestria. Since there were no anime titties to be found, nor football games to be had, you were stuck with the only ingredients of magical malarkey and the ability to wax your own porpoise at will. Though, to be fair, the ponies would probably not take kindly to the latter. Unicorns couldn't explain it to you, science textbooks shed no light on the subject, and heck, even the princesses couldn't even explain it. Well, actually, the latter bit was a little bit of a lie that you've co-opted for conversations with pretty mares, they actually did explain it to you. But your eyes glazed over, and you tuned out the moment that they went into anything mathematical. Math could die in a fire for all you cared. So, in the meantime, you were stuck here. And as you soon found out, when a nice castle staff pony off shift tried to comfort you, you had a certain abundance of a particular skill. It was a commodity worth more than its weight in bits, gold, titties, and friendship combined. Your female friends back home had gifted you with a knowledge and experience on how to properly cuddle and snuggle. You thought it was just common knowledge when you first curled up with that first tan-coated golden mane mare named Chrysanthemum. But as it turns out, it was a highly sought-after skill in a potential romantic suitor in Equestria. And you were willing to do it. Without the commitment. Well, like back on Earth, news tended to spread like a cloud of pollen from a sea of ejaculating poppy plants in Flanders Fields, trademarked, during a windy day in the spring. Because before you knew it, you literally had a line of mares waiting for a therapeutic session of cuddling to get their minds off of what few or many troubles they had swimming in those technicolor heads of theirs. To take stock of what you now possessed, you had an army of attractive mares awaiting at your platonic, physical embrace at any time. Of which, you could convert any of them into a physical and or romantic relationship at will if you tried hard enough. You also earned the envy and the respect of all the stallions and some mares in the guard, which made for excellent stories and bonding experiences with your new friends in the castle tavern. And you gladly regaled these tales each time a new guy would ask you about your gift during your group drinking fest during the evenings. There is no goddamn way! The white-coated new recruit assured in his more than tipsy disposition. This earned him a couple of playful jeers from the more seasoned veterans of the bunch, but your confidence from the first-hand experience made sure that you were ready to tell the latest tale in excruciating detail. That's completely true, you said, taking another swig of your drink of choice for the evening. The banter escalated playfully back and forth in an effort to convince the overconfident newbie that your questionable, unorthodox skills with mares were off the charts. You were even about ready to prove it to him in person, with a shy cutie sitting in the corner of the tavern another guardsmare having recently gone off shift. Now, you were not one to go out betting, but you would gladly proposition this mare like the dirty whore you were, to cuddle over and over again for the entire night. And you knew for a fact that you would have success beyond your colleagues' wildest imaginations. Had you been able to foresee the future through the chorus of drunken laughter from your friends around the booze-covered table, you would have been 100% correct. In a sense. The tavern door suddenly swung open, its hinge barely sustaining any measure of structural integrity as it slammed into the wall. The doorstop was obliterated with a mighty crash. If there was to be any sort of record scratch in the soundtrack of life, this is where it would have taken place. In place of the once closed door, the cool night air from the open ventilated castle whooshed in in a dramatic mighty gale force that heralded the entrance of a particular member of the Lunar Guard. She stepped in, completely armored up, save for her helmet which allowed all to focus attention on her. And focus your attention, you did. Her ponytail mane was navy blue, much like Luna's night sky tonight, and it glinted in the odd candlelight of the dimly lit establishment, much like her golden pools for eyes. She, being a bat pony, was immediately obvious by the cute little tufts of fluff atop her sharp ears, and in conjunction with the snaggle fang scowl on the lower half of her muzzle, she presented herself as a mare on a mission. 
she was looking for some pony. And the moment those predatory Othestral eyes made contact with yours, you had never felt more like you wanted to shit your pants full of your own spinal column in your entire life. Through a bar that was now as silent as a cemetery of midnight, she jutted her hoof straight towards you. Straight towards your stunned face, from afar. You! She exclaimed through bared teeth. Her voice, as smooth as the finest equestrian wine with a tinge of a rasp, sounded so Scottish that you felt the need to almost apologize for your 10% English roots. Your mouth had run dry despite it being previously filled with an honestly terrible liquor that you couldn't remember. Probably vodka. Yeah, definitely vodka. Your jaw tried in any manner to form some words, but you only managed a pathetic stammer and a requisite gesture to your own person. Me? There were a few musings of whispers from your friends on both sides, and you could only distinctly hear the word Stella being dropped. The mare in question began marching forward in earnest with heavy, boot-clad steps. Your table cleared outward immediately like a pack of uncovered plague rats, and left you to your own potentially bloody demise at the hands of this lunar guards mare. She beamed as she got closer, but the pep in her step never waned. You're called Tom Rat, mate! Oh, I've been fucking going nutta looking for you, sweet juicy ass, only to find that you're being some slack cunt with these mint waffles instead of knocking about something useful with your life. She voiced. You could detect the sarcasm and jest in her harsh words, as well as the smug, beautiful smile that she sported in kind. But being completely honest with yourself, you weren't exactly sure what she said. Likewise, you didn't have the balls to politely ask for a clarification. You had recoiled fully back as Stella invaded your personal space, sizing you up from foot to forehead. However, she seemed happy enough with the results, and placed her hoof forward in the only bit of formality that she would ever show you. Stella Saber, mate. Very lovely to meet you, lad, but now that we're done with all the fucking frou-frou pleasantries... She began anew, shooting a brief stink eye to any pony who would even dare conceive of intervening. I'm calling in your services. Your emotions ran wild, but you still had enough sense to grasp her outstretched armored hoof with your hands and shake on it. You introduced yourself in full, but beyond that, your mind was of little help and abandoned you to your fate as well. Um, and nice to meet you too. Uh, what do you- Stella showed exactly zero interest in your response as she immediately retracted her hoof and nipped at your shirt, promptly tugging you out of your chair. I've heard the talk, came her muffled words as she continued to drag you towards the door like a spunky dog playing tug of war. You weren't even resisting. You were afraid to. I've had a long fucking week, and we're gonna snuggle you con. Despite a lack of understanding on both fronts of her speech and her being muffled, you were able to at least register one key word in her vernacular that actually made sense. Oh, you wanna snuggle? You questioned the obvious, shooting your own smug look back at the newbie solar guard who dared question your gift. Stella finally let go of your shirt, which now had two distinct holes near the damp hem, at the sign that you were willing to cooperate fully. She beamed her pearly whites, and her eyes glinted with a profound eagerness that her swishing tail helped to back up. Aye! She exclaimed. We're going back to me barracks, and I'm going to cuddle the shit out of you until you can't stand the sight of another mare. The ferocity in her words scared you. This was true. But at the same time, getting ordered around by a foul-mouthed Thestral Merida from Brave was hilarious and strangely arousing. Even more so, you cherished your gift. Stella would not break you in this regard, and you would see to it that it would be she being the one who would melt in your embrace and beg for more. An unspoken challenge had been created. The battle lines had been drawn. There would be no surrender, and there would be no retreat. We'll see about that, Stella. You offered, then gesture out the door of the tavern. Lead the way. The mare held her head high and brushed the backside of your right leg with her perfectly coiffed tail on her way out. And, of course, you had to project one last smug anime face on your way out, while the rest of your friends reeled from what just transpired. The Lunar Guard barracks were nothing special. You could really only make out the darker stone walls of the main arteries and the ebony wood doors before Stella kicked open one seemingly at random. You were then promptly shoved inside with two hooves against the small of your back. Stella then somewhat playfully ordered, Hence I can't. And her hooves were supplanted with her forehead as she constantly urged you towards her bed. You still weren't quite used to her speech. You probably would never get used to her speech to reasonably determine what was sarcasm and what was a credible threat to tear your genitals off. While you genuinely enjoyed your side job and needed a little convincing to snuggle with an attractive mare, Stella's abrasiveness was a little harsh on your lower back. You probably had the coveted back dimples by how much her steel-clad hooves dug into it. From what you had gathered from what little you could from inside of her room, the darker moonstone builds carried over into the individual bunks. You barely caught a hint of the outline of her double bed by virtue of the little light that was afforded through a small window towards the ceiling. That's when a pair of hooves bucked you forward. 
You tumbled onto the oddly soft, comfortable goodness of Stella's bed and the extra fuzzy velvety comforter. Your entire body, especially your face, was enveloped by a softness that you had not experienced since that one freshly washed mare about three weeks ago had just finished grooming herself for a night out on the town later. Due to the size of the average pony in Equestria, as well as your rather slightly above average height as a human male, about half your shin down to your toes still hung off of the bed and were free to dangle at will. And now that you had a moment to think about it, you have had a lot of experience thus far. Like a disturbing amount. You turned over at the sound of metallic clanging against the floor, and Stella was eagerly shaking off her armor piece by piece. Like how an animal would eject water from their coat. Each individual undoubtedly expensive piece of forged defensive equipment was discarded haphazardly onto the floor, on top of an already present bunch of empty shimmering bottles of liquor in a sea of metal and glass. Still, as her eagerness and lack of coordination as a feared member of the Lunar Guard was an amusing irony, especially as Stella attempted to fumble out of her patrol. <sighs> you need some help over there? You venture to ask. Now you fuck yourself and make room. She exclaimed, finally ridding herself of her last piece of armor. With that, Stella launched herself into the air and beat her wings twice, which suspended her for the briefest of moments over the bed like Wily e. Coyote over a cliff. She then plopped down and sent both of you bouncing on her mattress for just a second. Going by reflex at this point, you turn to Stella to ask. Alright, so how do you want to do th- Your question was answered when the mare in question slammed herself against you, adjusting herself so she could lay flush atop your torso and wrap her hooves around you as much as she possibly could. The extra weight so suddenly thrust upon you was enough where it took more effort to breathe. But it was every bit worth it when he saw the face of a relieved, unwinding bat pony mare fluttering her eyes closed. Stella exhaled comfortably and allowed herself to melt into your body. Though the suddenness of her movements, most mares were quite shy at the start of things, ensured that you didn't react appropriately right off the bat. Oi! Stella did well to arouse you from your stupor, and then tapped your side with her hoof impatiently. Go on then! Snuggle me, you knobhead! No further invitation was needed. You relaxed into the oddly comfortable bed and wrapped both of your arms around Stella's midsection, further pulling her into you. That extra closeness did well to mesh her body heat with yours and allowed you to siphon hers to get a bit warmer. Stella further relaxed into you, evident by another elongated sigh. Her eyes remained dutifully closed, and her breathing slowed to a crawl as she let your embrace melt away whatever was bogging down her mind. Admittedly, seeing the normally abrasive mare in such a relaxed and cute state with that gentle ascent of a smirk on her muzzle was a sight that could cure diseases. You could positively squeeze her cheeks at this moment with a squee. But that would also entail you likely getting a hoof up your virgin sphincter, and an action of that nature went beyond the scope of your services. Your body heats had sufficiently equalized between the two of you, and Stella's tail ceased twitching in eagerness, opting to lay limp around your knee area. You didn't mind, so long as it didn't tickle you, though that could be easily rectified if it ever came to that. And like all times of relishing silently in one another's presence, in such a platonic yet somewhat intimate embrace, you faced the universal issue. Your hands were bored, and the inside of your arms were beginning to dampen from your natural resting perspiration. You removed your arms from around Stella and placed both of your hands on either side of her spine. Pressing the tips of your fingers firmly into her coat and skin, you could feel the top back muscles that she was endowed with by the virtue of her rigorous guard training. The silence was barely interrupted by you dragging all ten of your fingertips straight up her back all the way to her neck. Her shudder brought a victorious smile to your face. Well, alright. Oh, fuck me. She voiced, still having not opened her eyes. You chuckled breathily. You enjoying yourself? You ventured to ask. Oi, oh, do that again, mate. Stella answered. More than happy to acknowledge her request, you flattened your hands against the side of her neck and gently applied pressure with the heel of your palm. You then slid said palms back down to her sides where you started and repeated the same ministrations that caused her to shudder in the first place. Seeing her react in that way, like many of your clients, it filled you with another serving of the warm and fuzzies. Stella sighed up blissfully once more, her tongue having lolled out of her mouth. Oh, that's the stuff. From there, you again wrapped your left arm around Stella's back, holding her nice and tightly against you. You had already adjusted to the weight by now, so you were able to completely focus on keeping both of you warm and comfy. With your right hand now free, you pressed all five of your fingertips onto the back of her neck and slowly dragged them towards the center of your palm, squeezing a non-existent stress ball and creating lines in her coat all the while. Her gentle humming, which developed into outright purring, told you everything that you needed to know. You yourself decided to rest your eyes, especially when Stella nuzzled herself into your neck and didn't allow you to look down. The ceiling, likewise, wasn't particularly interesting to look at. At least at first glance. You narrowed your eyes when you saw what appeared to be a poster plastered on said ceiling. You blinked hard when you came face to face, 
to face, with a poster that was taped to said ceiling, which displayed a conventionally attractive mayor and stallion flaunting their goods. There were even more questions than answers when he saw that there was a curious stain on the poster. Stella kicked one of her legs back against your shin, bringing you back to reality to resume her treatment. Admittedly, feeling her rhythmic warm breath on your neck was pretty nice. It was the little things that you always appreciated in these snuggle sessions, as well as casually learning more about your clientele. So, what's got you all tense? You asked, circularly massaging your thumb and middle finger into the sides of her neck. Mm, recruits, being recruits, new responsibilities. Come on, being a bail in short of a tail toe. Usual shite. She mumbled out her answer. You proceeded to settle on petting her neck gently, then ran your palm up to her face and cupped her cheek in your embrace. To touch it all off, you brushed her with your thumb a couple of times, then moved to another target in the process. Yeah, all in a day's work, huh? You asked, as you took tender hold of Stella's left ear. You pressed your thumb just a little bit into her outer ear, but massaged the sensitive flap of flesh between your fingers in circular motions. You ran your hands course up to the little cute tuft that she had on her ear tips, which was a staple of the thesis rolls. Stella seemed to impossibly melt even further into your hold like some muscly ice cream on a hot beach day. You could feel her breathing becoming a little shakier against your neck. <sighs> that was her answer, followed up when she softly placed a hoof against your mouth when she felt you about to reply. Mate, I say this with all the love and respect in the world. Quit running, your fucking dick holster. Just do what you're doing and let me enjoy this. Please. With that decree, you figured this was how the rest of your night was going to go. Silence, and cuddling up with a pretty bat pony, exchanging heat until you both likely fell asleep. However, the position was getting a little stale for you, even if you were thoroughly enjoying the reaction from needing both of her ears. Here, quick change. You whispered, and with only a little bit of effort, moved to slide her off of you so she could rest by her side. She silently complied, and instead rested the side of her head against your chest. Stella was now in the perfect position for you to simply wrap your right arm around and hold her nice and snugly against you. She accepted the literal open arm invite without haste, and she did well to curl her body up into a little Scottish ball of hate while she rested silently. She also lay her right hoof and leg over you for extra grip to complete the true definition of snuggle. Closing your own eyes, you traced single lines through her coat, up and down her side, occasionally scissoring your fingers as you wove them into her coat and over her skin proper. You felt your lips tug inward in a satisfied shit-eating smirk when you felt Stella's own dopey smile against your chest. You couldn't tell how long this had gone on by this point. The ambient nocturnal sounds from outside the barracks seemed to loop on themselves like natural white noise. Stella's breathing was consistent and deep, that much you could feel by this point, and it was more than likely that she had properly fallen asleep. Or so it seemed. You were more than prepared to stay your welcome and take a nice nap with a cute bat pony mare in your grasp for as long as she'd allow you. And to prepare for that, you simply smiled as you ran your hand down to her side, which was a very neutral place for it to rest. You felt Stella's hoof grasp your hand and move it right back to her neck, and hold you right there. Again, you could feel her smiling softly against you. This elicited a similar reaction from you. Content to just rest like this until she booted you out whenever that was, you resolved to just massage her exposed ear for the duration. More purrs. God, bat ponies were just absolute cinnamon rolls, even if they were filled with alcohol and rage. After an undetermined amount of time, Stella pulled back from you, sat on her haunches, and yawned, which stirred you from your light slumber. In the moonlight, you witnessed her fixing up her bed mane and willing her ponytail back into place. Stella patted the bed twice. Alright then, I'm keeping you. Well, that woke you up. You cocked an eyebrow, wholly unsure of how to take that. Um... She faced you with a little emotion in her face that lets you know that she was in any way joking with you. And that stale look terrified you, like an early human seeing an elongated face. She eventually gave up a cocky smirk, along with her golden eyes lighting up in the moonlight. Oh, hi, after that, you can go climb on the fucking short chariot if you think I'm letting you go. Honk your fucking rides here, you fucking taff clown cunt. She giggled, and then rolled on top of you with a much more sultry gaze. A few of your sessions had occasionally spiraled into something hotter and more sexual in nature, though this was the first time that you could recall where you were wide-eyed with unknowing and that unknowing terrified you a little bit. At least until staring into those eyes a little more, filling you with a more familiar sense of want. Still, you weren't gonna get tied down without a fight. Your words were laced with faux incredulity, rolling off of your tongue. Um, yeah, so what you're saying is, you're claiming me? She nodded with a wider smile. Aye, maybe you can have the long chariot after all. You pursed her lips. Right, and how do you intend on staking your claim? You dare to ask. Stella thought for a moment, clicked her tongue, and then shrugged. Like a sucky cock. 
Well, shit. That was easy. <laughs> Sold. I am fully aware that most or all of my accents are tier zero shits. But aside from that, this is a fantastic frickin' read. Every single portion of the story is just amazing, and it's crazy to think that this was actually written back in 2017. Beautiful stuff. Absolutely beautiful stuff. Now let's get on to our very tough donators. Top donators, TacoCat598, Peter Coltard, J10 Man, Darkseid, Ponyman, and Gauntlet. Zar630, Strix, Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Drake Love Dragon, Pastel Skies, Dospo, Madman Stan, Delta Omega, Jack Hedge, Runeslaith9852, Hunter Norman, Dash of Evergreen, Rhiny Dragonwolf, Tal Rasha, The Toilet Snake, Sword Brother and Mordred, Ron and Wandering, Random Person Man Guy, Easy, Skyochia, Lusty Pricket, Jordan Peterson, Crimson Kitten A9, Lightskin, Monster Kitty, Tim Bob, Starlight Glimmer, Lightning Blitz, Squiddy Boy, David E. Sanchez, Soldier. Dragon, Gaggy, Trey, Shadow Drake, Joe Piercy, Hunter Mara, Alex F, Rainbow Dash, Teal Anderson, TV Killer, John Becker, Leon Reynolds, Raven Speedster, Zach Rakow, Mr. ECU, Edgar Garcia, One Kingdom One, Nissa Rusan, Vazuri, Dyslexic Character Sheets, Just a Random Boy, Hodrick Plencart, A Crazy Person, Ponyman365, Neapolitan, Six of Nine, Shyfire, Stamp, and Dion Baseri. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and live life to the fullest.